Hi, I'm Ken Edwards. And I'm Dane Rakestraw. We're with Keystone Steel & Wire, manufacturers of Red Moran Agricultural Fence Products. We're here today to talk about proper bracing, which I feel like is very important in any fence construction. We understand there are a lot of techniques out there to build bracing. However, the steps we show you today will help make sure your fence lasts a long time. When installing an H-brace, it's always very important to determine the location, taking in consideration future projects, expansion of the fence that you're building, gates, and digging your hole. You want to make sure that you maximize the amount of posts in the hole, taking into consideration the height of your fence. It's also nice to use a tamping stick with inch markings on it so you can determine the height of your post out of the ground without having to use a tape measure. When setting your post, you want to make sure that you have the correct height, tamping a small amount of dirt in each time, check and make sure that your post is level on both sides, which is especially critical. This, this post is going to be supporting a gate. You can use concrete to set your post, making sure to leave the four to six inch gap between the surface and the concrete for water drainage so your post doesn't rot. You can also use rock. Uh, the smaller rock, the better. Next, you're gonna to wanna to mark off your fence line with string or wire. This will ensure that your fence is straight. After you tie it off your string to a stake or another post, you'll need to determine the length of your cross member, which is the next post in line after your corner post. This is normally twice the length of your fence height. A four foot fence would require an eight foot cross member. Dig the hole similar to the corner post. Using the string as your guide, and the brace post is set uh, in, in the conventional way that your end post was set in the ground. Again, either by uh, tamping dirt in the hole, concrete, or gravel. This will be set in line, again, with the direction of your fence. Normally, these assemblies are set um, 330 feet out to 660 feet apart on woven wire type fencing. Well, you want to maximize the amount of posts that you can put into the hole, taking in consideration the height of your fence. A brace assembly cannot be too strong. Next, you want to set your brace post to the same height as your corner post. Again, using small amounts of dirt. You want the brace post set out of the ground the same amount as your corner post. If your post isn't quite high enough, you can add a little dirt to the bottom. Again, check for height and level, tamping firmly with small amounts of dirt. Now it's time to install your cross member. You want to measure down where the cross member is going to be three quarters the height of your fence from the ground. You want to drill a hole in your corner post three quarters of the way through, making sure not to drill all the way through with a 3 8 drill bit. Make sure to keep the drill level. You want to do the same thing on your brace post, however this time you will want to drill all the way through. Again, making sure your drill is level.
Next, you'll want to drill six to eight inches in the center of your cross member. Again with a 3 8 drill bit. Our cross member is a four inch by eight foot wood post. Our corner posts are five inch, five to six inch, eight foot wood posts. Next you'll need to drive a 10 inch brace pin, three eighths inch, 10 inch brace pin into the corner post. You'll notice Ken taps it out a little bit here at the end. That's so you can put your cross member on easier. Next, measure the distance between your corner post and your brace post. Well, this obviously will determine the length of your cross member. At that point, you cut it to size. Next, you'll want to install your cross member. To do this, insert the pre-drilled hole into the brace pin. You'll want to check for level. To make sure your cross member is level, you'll need to check the distance down from the corner post to the cross member. Do the same on the brace post to the cross member. Cheat it up or down accordingly and drill your hole into the cross member, making sure to drill all the way in. Insert the 10 inch by 3 8 brace pin so it's flush with the brace post. Here we're installing a, a different type of brace. This is a pipe using a pipe as the cross member. Again installed very similar to the wood cross member for the exception that we're just using pipe. Another alternative method would be a U-brace. This one's assembled a little bit differently. You're going to want to level it, drill your hole, and drive your pin. You may be wondering why we're showing three different methods for Cross members, no one is better than the other. Uh, it depends on your preference, your style, what's available in your area. The physics of how this system works are all the same for the various cross members. Another tool that's valuable in the installation of H-bracing, or bracing in general, is a spin and jenny. Uh, again, these can be located at your local ag supply store, or they can be found on redbrandgear.com as well. Basically holds the brace wire. Brace wire is, is normally a 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire. Installing brace wire is the last component to build in an H-brace. 